Coach. David. How are you, man? How's it going, sir? Good, good. I'm really good. Good Thanks to so see much you. For coming good by. to see it. Good place. Nice location. This is good. This Let's is good. Let's take a look. That was the right end. Good, good. It was easy, Dave. We uh, today's a day off for the players, so today we uh, give me a chance to do a few things I need to catch up on, and uh, also do some work getting ready for the game this weekend. So when the players get a day off, that doesn't. No, really that's mean. not my day off. No, but it will be a good day. It's a different day for us, but I will spend a lot of time getting ready for this next game. Well, you like coffee, don't you? I love coffee. So I love gonna, coffee. We're gonna get to that. Here, I can't wait to have my first cup. You see this? Stress-free. I love it. I love it. That's what I need all year long. I need a stress-free environment. <laughs> and I am going to do, you know, last year with our plane accident and everything, I, I'm committed to just putting things in perspective, trying to have great balance in my life. Yeah. And, you were, uh, you, now, I, after that, I um, was seeing a lot of things on TV, a lot of post-game, a lot of pre-game things, and I'm like, that's a different. <laughs> that's a different coach yeah. beat line. You were a lot more, it yeah. like a lot more looser, a lot, of, well, a lot more uh, in the moment sort of deal. Yeah, I think you have to do that. I think yeah. that 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 you need sometimes, unfortunately, you need things like that to shake you up a little bit to realize that to, that to, a lot of your uh, the obstacles in your life are really just opportunities to really grow. Yeah. And um, I, I've got a better command on that. I don't have complete command yet, yeah. but I have better command of that right now to try to put things in perspective, really uh, accept some things to happen as, as something you can really learn from for the future. Cool. Let's take a seat. Let's sit, let's sit down. It'd be great. What do, you, what do your mornings look like? I usually, I set that alarm, it's either 6.30, uh, 6, 6, 6.30 or 7, depending on my mood the night before. Uh, go right to the coffee machine, <laughs> first thing. Uh, and then what I've learned to spend about 20 minutes, 15 minutes by myself. Um, it's usually with some prayer, some meditation. Um, and then I'll catch up on the news. I'm a ferocious, uh, I don't think that's the right word. I'm a, I love to read. Okay. And uh, I love to read. And unfortunately, you used to wake up and you'd read the newspaper and it came to an end. Yeah. Now you can read this newspaper and another newspaper. So you have to, I almost put an alarm on, so I got 30 minutes of just, I want to know what's going on in the world, not just sports. I want to know what's going on in the world so that if I know what's going on in the world, I can better address my team. And I just can't just get into this vacuum where it's basketball, basketball, basketball. But then right after about an hour of some type of reflection, some type of catching up on the world, then the, the, the book mag comes out and I'm preparing for practice, watching film for about a couple hours. I stay home most of the morning and just prepare. I go in the office about 10, 10.30, and then we come home at seven or eight. And it's, it's almost every day. Yeah. Sundays might be more of a, you know, go to church and, and then start at 12 and end at 7 or 8. Saturdays probably start like at 8 and end at 7 or 8. But it's, a, it's the only life I know, the only life Kathleen knows, and we love it. So you've been coaching for 30 years. No, more than that, 43. 43? This is the 43rd year, yeah. This is the 43rd year. Yeah. I don't know how to count. Yeah, 40, yeah, what a 30 Yeah, 40 long, years. long time, Dave. 40 long years. Time. Yeah. How does it feel like it's been 40? No. I, just, I look back at it right now, and it's like I, like I had a reunion a little bit ago with my ex Lemoyne team, which was really good in 87, 88. It was the, 30, it was the 30th year reunion of the, a great team. It was like I had just seen them like the day before. Now, I, I, I look at them, Dave, and I said, like, okay, how old are you? And I'm expecting to say, like, 35. So, no, no, Coach, we're 50. And I'm saying, you know, because I, I was only really 10, 10 years older than them at the time. Yeah. And uh, so it's really, uh, it goes by quickly. You know, I got the great support at home with Kathleen and on all the kids and the grandkids now. But uh, every year, every day is a fresh start. I can't wait to get up in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, have my coffee and get ready for the next day. I think one of the biggest things that I still use to this day and still most impressed by you, is still people ask me, like, I say I played at Michigan, who'd you play under? I said I played under Coach Beeline. They say, what's he like? Or, or what's, what's great about Coach Beeline? 
And I say, the number one thing that I took from him, you asked a question every single day, did we get better today? It wasn't, okay, we're trying to win the NCAA tournament four months from now. No, but in this film session, did we get better? In, in this drill, did we get better? And you were able to, even though we were losing a lot when we first got there, you were still able to bring it all into that day and that yeah. moment. Um, and it's something that I use now in business and with our organizations is you have this goal, but you gotta bring that goal into the activity that you're doing for today. Where did you get, where did you get that perspective from? I, I, I don't know, uh, today it's really a, uh, a I guess a, uh, a hot button for a lot of people to talk about embracing the process. I don't think I even use that term, but uh, when you were rebuilding programs, and that's what basically um, has, for some reason, the jobs I got were in re needed rebuilding. And uh, so it was like, w w we got to find small victories in every day. And, and you may have 10 defeats, but, but embrace the three victories because pretty soon you'll have more and you'll have more. And just em em embrace that. And really is is taking the pro let the process take care of itself. As you know, the the things that we learned that first year when we were maybe ten and eighteen or I don't know even though we were ten and twenty two. It was worse worse than I thought. Helped us win twenty one games the next year. Yeah. If we didn't go through that, we wouldn't win twenty one. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't know at that, that at that time to say Dave Merritt and C.J. Lee. Listen, for a year they were on the scout team, and uh, the scout team was always winning. So the next year, when the scout team was still winning, I said, "It's not, it's not the first team. It's those teams are good enough to play and really help us win." The next thing you know, we're in the NCAA tournament. We learned how to win a lot by how we lost. That's right. And another thing that you you always talked about, um, which is another aspect that I try to to keep in mind. Um, you know, every halftime we came into the into the locker room and there was stats on the board of, of things that you wanted to keep track of, but it was always things that we could control. So you control yep. what you can control. Um, and uh, where, where, where do you, what do you think about that and, and, and well, where did you? I, I think it was before there was all this, the computers and the analytics, yeah. there were certain numbers that determined winning. And if you could, you could get, again, you got the game within the game. And if you can look at life, you can look at the game and just say, listen, I just got to win today. Or I just, you know, the difference in a field goal percentage, let's, let's say you, you have a mark of you want to hold everybody under 41. That's elite. And you're at 46. It's only five more stops a game. It's only five more stops. So the same thing in life, you know, it's, it's the idea that if you just change a few things, you, you move that alarm clock up 15 minutes, you can get more done. You exercise every day and just say, I'm going to exercise every day. It's going to make you make clearer thoughts during the day. And, but if you had those small games with, you know, that, that really determine your success at the end of the day. So we wanted you guys at halftime to look at, okay, we're, don't look at just the scoreboard. Look at the trend, why it's happening. And pretty soon you, you start thinking about one more defensive stop. You know, one more extra pass will give us more assists. And that's what leads to winning. Winning just doesn't happen. There's a series of events that leads to it. So normally your, your teams are extremely good at not turning the ball over and not fouling a lot. What goes into that and how are you able to teach those principles to your guys? Well, the game is, the game is really, uh, it's not a game of rebounding, of scoring, it's a game of possessions. How many times can you get more possessions than the other opponent? Well, if you're coming down and throwing it out, my bad, my bad, over and over again, you didn't get a shot at the basket. And even if you're shooting 30%, Right, and uh, you're, it's better than, than than not getting a shot. That's zero percent. So you really can value that. And then it's not about not fouling. It's about not having bad fouls. Things that you can control, just like just like life. If you can control, um, you know how many times that team goes to the foul line, you're going to be much better because that's the easiest shot, right? The five, other than a dunk, that's like the easiest shot. So if we can do those two things and just get a shot, 
almost every time down. Last year we were number one in the country and not turning over. Number one, got this trophy in, in the mail. I said, what is this? And we opened there's this trophy. 9.2 turnovers, number one in the country. So um, you try to you try to figure out what 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 helps you win. That's got to be a big reason why last year's team was so successful. But there's something in there. There's a, there's this attention to detail, right? Um, I remember our first practice uh, when you came in. Uh, we all thought you were crazy um, because. Our first practice, the whole entire practice, is catching the ball on two feet, like just making very routine passes and doing scoop layups. Yeah, that's right. And after practice, everyone's sitting around, we're like, okay, what do we just do? <laughs> like, what do we just yeah, do? Yeah. Like, we play in college, why are we practicing passing and why are we practicing layups? Like, that isn't the entire practice. but. You know, as we continue to get through the process, you know, we learn those are the small steps that lead to not turning the ball over, that lead to running offense. Running, running offense. Running offense, right. Um, why are you so meticulous in those areas? Well, it's just like, it's just like any type of education. You know, it, it's not about the plays. It's not unless the player can e execute the play. So if you, if you, if you want to multiply, you got to be able to add. And what I saw with every team that we've rebuilt, the first thing is, is get the foundation really strong. You were a foundation player. CJ, Zach Novak, Stu, they were all guys that probably never anybody thought they'd play at Michigan, but you were so good in the fundamentals, you could really assist us win and, and, and let, us, let us play. You allowed us to play because you were fundamentally sound. So when you have a whole bunch of players that are fundamentally sound, that really makes a big difference. So it's, it's just say you can't, you gotta walk before you run. And everybody wants to run, everybody wants to get there in a hurry. And it's so different than that, really. In basketball, football, everything. You have the greatest offense in football, but if the dude can't block, if the quarterback can't throw on time on target, it's not going to work. So you got to spend hours in the fundamentals to make sure that when you, when you progress, you can do the, the, the little things right that you don't have to think about. You just do them. So um, you've been coaching for over 40 years. Talk about the um, talk about spending a lot of time with other people's kids, being um, you know for three or four years the the main authority figure in their life, and then how that relates to your four kids, and how you were able to balance spending a lot of time with other people's kids, and also your responsibilities and obligations to your wife and, and yeah, also your yeah. family. It's a difficult balance uh, because you really, you're right, you take those, those young men on in our situation and they become your family for those four years and beyond. Yeah. You know, here we are, how many years later? We're here talking, it's, right? It's been right, a while. right. But eight years later, later, we're still talking. So they become a little bit of a family, yet you still don't want them to get in front of your, you know, your blood. And, uh, but your blood, they're almost, uh, in Palin comparison, I never was in combat, never was in service, but it is a bit of a, of, a, of a transient type of thing. You're moving around, like each one of my four children were, were born, you know, or, or they all had different, uh, they all were moved in their senior year, right? Or, or was about to move in their senior year. Uh, it's just different and, and they have to adapt quickly. And you have to understand that. And that's, it's, it's a difficult balance for me that sometimes I have been so um, focused on the team, I forget about simple things, birthdays, right? Uh, just, just treating my children the way I should treat them. And I, I, I feel bad about that many times. And at the same time, I found my kids are really understanding because they do realize that I do love them. But sometimes I'm just like so driven to win. Why am I driven to win? Because I want to support them. So it, there's a there's a balance, but I and I work at it. I have to work at it every day, and I think everybody has to. Yeah. And just looking back on on these forty over forty years of, of coaching, are there specific things or sort of areas that you wish you wish you would have done different? 
Oh, but just about every day there's things I wish I did that had done differently. Like with, with all those wins, there's a lot of losses. And then there's some, t some, there's some times when I was probably uh, with the young, I didn't have the, the relationship with a player that I would like to have. I learned a lot about that. Still work at it. I got to, everybody has, they, no matter where you work, you have to prioritize relationships uh, with, your, with whoever you're working with or for because uh, that's how it all gets done. And I think our best teams had great relationships with the coaches, had great relationships with each other. And there's some teams probably that I know more about it. Um, boy, I wish I had worked harder at that relationship so that I could have reached them. And I think we're all like that. And, and you, you want it to be, uh, at, at the same time, it would be like you might mention that to somebody said, no, coach, that was called cool. But now I feel, but no, but I could have done better. So what do you, when you're done, what do you want people to say about, about John B. Lott? I don't want to even, I ask get answer that all the time. It's, it's, that sounds so egotistical for me to say, you know, just hopefully he was a good man. That's, that, you know, it comes down to those type of things, you know. I used to say with my children when they were growing up, you know, I'd be, I'd be, uh, oh, you know, you, you need to, you need to practice harder, or you need to study harder, or you need to be, you know, in the, in the long run, it was like, I just want you to be a good kid. And, and when you're all done, I think if you would just did, try to do the next right thing, try your best to just be a good man or good woman um, in everything that you do, do the next, do the next, we say, do the next right thing. Just life isn't about doing the right thing and then stop and do the next right thing. And, and sometimes that's to, to get out and do more for others is the next right thing. So uh, we're going to wrap up, but... Um... You have won a lot of games um, and coaching over 40 years. Um, and I think I have one of the more unique perspectives as a player of yours uh, because I've, yes, you do. I've had different levels of access. Um, so I was like the walk on, shagging balls. <laughs> I was also a captain who, yep. you know, had, had a role, success. had a role with the team, but also had a different relationship yeah. with you because right. I was a captain. Right. Then I did radio for four years, so I saw a little bit more of the behind the scenes and yep. kind of what in, what went into yeah. to coaching. Um, one of the things that I'm most impressed with is your ability to adapt and to change your philosophy based on where you are and 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 based on feedback yep. from others. Um, can you talk about that maturation process that you've been through, especially here at Michigan? Um, don't really run the run, the run three one anymore. Yeah, yeah. Have changed offensively your philosophies. Yeah. How, how has that change, changing process been for you? Uh, and is this is it is it comfortable for you? I, I think it's the only reason I'm still coaching 43 years later. As you know, most people, a majority of people, do not leave coaching on their own terms. It is, especially at this level, you count the net number of guys that did not get, never got fired. And it's a very small number if you stay in it for a while. And I think it's the only reason that we've been able to stay uh, uh, afloat and just keep winning is because we change. And I'm not afraid to listen. I think you gotta have very uh, a thick skin and be ready to listen to others and take it all in and grow yourself. You just can't help others grow, now you gotta grow yourself. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always watching the game, the NBA game, other people play, talking with other people and been very receptive to that change. You, get, you can't have a, a know-it-all attitude, it's gotta be a bit of a learn-it-all attitude. Mm. And, and when you have that, you can really uh, make big changes. And I, I wish I was smarter, I wish I could learn it, learn more. And then, and then uh, transfer it over to the players, transfer it over to the staff. But I, I try to do that as much as we can. And each assistant coach I've had and each player that I've had has brought me change. And now you just throw it all together and hope you, you can put it together so it's good enough to continue the success. But it's all worth it, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all worth it. Everything's worth it. <laughs> yes. it that, that's the thing. The, the challenges that you have every, every day, uh, are really important that you say this will be worth it when it's all over and we uh, all the adversity we've had and over those 43 years I look back at it and said man it really felt it, it really felt great because it was really worth it 
Appreciate you. Thanks, David, very Love much. You. Thank you very much.